How often do you feel of taking time off of work to go on your next tropical adventure? Despite your best intentions, life may feel like a never-ending treadmill. You go to school, you get a job, you take breaks, you get married, you have kids, and then it's all over. I've broken off the treadmill and I work to live, not live to work. I found a good balance between working full time as an employee and travel the world every chance I get, which equates to about two thirds of the year. How often do you feel travel is hard to achieve because of how out of reach it may feel? Be it not enough time, funds, or other events popping up. This is a common feeling. When I was younger, a lot of my focus was how to pay next month's rent by scraping by and working odd jobs to make those monthly payments. I would have never survived to this day if I stayed where I was. I dreamed every day about doing more of my life. Seeing the Roman Colosseum in Italy, the glacial mountains of Antarctica, and hiking the world famous trails in the Alps. I didn't make it to where I am by just daydreaming or by some chance. I needed an overarching goal, a plan to set all my dreams on to overcome all the challenges. And there definitely would be many hardships between then and now. Despite those challenges, I kept on the straight and narrow. My dreams and ambitions guided me. I made critical decisions in life to pass on buying material possessions, such as fancy clothes, fast cars, and big houses, in favor of realigning to my goals and plans. My plans were my golden compass. A plan makes commitment, something you have on your roadmap. And even though bumps along the way may prove and test your plan, and even though bumps in your dynamic life will modify and change those timelines, you must always keep your plan as the golden compass. Come up with specific goals and plans, and don't be afraid to have stages of your plan. For me, I had to figure out how to become a more valuable person. This was of course to allow me to make more money so I can afford all the travel I wanted to do. Not just travel with the bare minimum, but be able to have options and be able to travel comfortably. And I would also need to build skills and technical capability for adventure travel. Each of these being a smaller plan, a part of the grander plan. Your goals and plans should always feel a little distant and hard to achieve. This of course will be your own personal mountain to climb. And when you reach that top, you will be stronger and proud that you overcome it. From there, you can create new plans to overcome even taller mountains and bring new challenge and ambition to your life. Remember, life is a journey. It's not always about the end of the story that we should be focused on, but the story along the way of growth and triumph and the end will become so much more sweet when you reach it. But life will throw jabs at you when you least expect it, even though I had great ambitions. Sometimes life will get the best of you. Through my youth, my mother implanted a travel bug with me. We were going to travel together and start a business focused around travel and providing travel services to others. We were going to call it Travel Wise. And then it all came crashing down. In the worst year of my life, life started a full on beatdown of me. The year started off of a very sudden and tragic death of my mom. My car was stolen shortly after. Then my motorcycle was stolen. Very shortly after that, and I'm talking about within a couple weeks, I received a death threat on my door of where I lived in Seattle. It told me that I needed to move or die. After my stuff was stolen and after receiving a death threat, I decided it's a good idea to move. I moved into a new place, and that new place had bed bugs. I ultimately had to burn all of my stuff after moving into a new apartment. A couple months passed by, and I decided to buy a new motorcycle to make myself feel better after all of these tragic things have happened. Not too much longer, after a very short amount of time, that motorcycle was also stolen. So, without a doubt, I know the curveballs and how hard life can feel sometimes. It can be hard, but what got me through and on track with my life goals was the plan and getting back to that plan. But more importantly, how I broke that plan into smaller steps that I can focus on 
Even when I'm feeling down and sad, I can focus on getting to the next step. And as I'm moving forward, I can get back to that plan and my momentum can course correct. One major hurdle I had to have overcome was if I could not make more money, I could never travel as much as I wanted to or travel in the style I wanted to in terms of adventure travel. Adventure travel, because it's more remote, it's less commercial, tends to be more expensive. I needed to figure out ways to make more money. I picked up those ashes, I got out of my slump, and I got back on track. I decided I needed to go to college for something my mom had always been telling me I'd be good at. I was gonna go and get a computer science degree. And I attribute a lot to the success I had and working a full-time job while going back to school was mainly because I broke it down into smaller steps week by week. I focused not on the end goal of getting the bachelor's degree, but what I needed to do this week, next week, and I would try and evaluate how I was doing on that track. And each time I had success, each time I would complete one week, I knew I was one step closer to my goal, my overall plan. And let's be honest, most of us are not very good at holding to plans that seem very far off. If you focus on the end goal of climbing Everest, it may feel impossible. But if you focus instead on putting one foot in front of the other, eventually those steps you're making will take you to the top of Everest and then you're at your goal. You've made it. To put that simply, the best thing to do is have a grand golden compass of a plan and break that plan into smaller steps and you only focus on one step after the other and try and evaluate how you're doing with each step and each time you falter, maybe you miss a step. If your goal is something like saving $100 per step or $100, let's say, you know, $100 per paycheck for travel, then you know, maybe if you miss that $100 savings, what well, went wrong? How can you fix it? Is, do you have to adjust something on your schedule? Do you need to start trying to adjust some long-term plans? Maybe you need to have a plan on getting a better job or a more consistent schedule or figure out why you missed that $100. Is it achievable? Maybe you need to scale it back and make $50. And when you get that consistent, then you can start looking at increasing it. The steps that you focus on can be something as simple as weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly steps that you focus on. When I was in school, I needed to have a plan of graduating for my computer science degree. But that, when I started off, felt so far away. I needed to break it down. And those steps could be something as, what is my weekly assignments this week? Trying to achieve everything that I'm given and trying to make it a good schedule around it. So I would plan around, obviously, hard classroom times where I'm in the class, would study three or four hours of the day and try to keep to that schedule. When I slipped, I would evaluate what I need to do better or what kind of things do I need to learn or improve on to make sure I'm staying on track. And when I'm doing well, I try to make my goals more ambitious towards those steps. And in terms of making more money, I'm sure you can see how this kind of rubric can also be used for how to get a promotion. What kind of skills do you need? What kind of things do you need to be focusing on a week to week basis on improving yourself and keeping to your work schedule and in how much you're producing to that work schedule? Can you overproduce without burning too much time? Of course, time might be you studying and learning other things to help improve your skills and speed on how you do your job. And that makes you a more valuable person and obviously makes you able to earn more income at your current job or future jobs. After hundreds of steps, you'll find your plan has been achieved. But executing your plans and goals is only the start, a beginning of a beautiful life journey of growth and adventure. For myself, I need to always evaluate how I can become a more valuable person and how I can earn more so I can travel more. How can I improve my fitness so I can continue to do hard stuff when I travel safely and confidently? How can I be sure that I am confident enough in myself 
that can go somewhere new and feel capable. One broad plan is not enough to get me to this end goal. I needed to concoct many plans along this journey. Each plan breaking into smaller steps that are more measurable. I needed a better and more stable job so I never had to worry about rent again. In order to achieve that, I would have to research and apply for three jobs a week. I can further evaluate why I might not be getting job offers and improve how much time it takes me to apply to those jobs and the chances of them actually giving me a job interview. I would need to go to school and improve my skills and knowledge so I can become more competitive in the job market. I needed to feel more comfortable hiking. So I go on one hike a week and go and take many community courses in terms of like wilderness first aid, mountaineering, and a lot of technical stuff that would empower me to have that confidence and knowledge of how to do well with many different challenges in the wilderness. You can see that with every single plan I committed to, it was all part of a grander overarching plan. And by rinsing and repeating with every single step along the way, I felt more capable. I, with my next plan, I can, I can focus on doing more. I could uh, execute that plan more efficiently. I grew significantly with every single plan I repeated in repetition and improved for the next one. And of course, I always used the steps to break down each plan along the way and focused on how those steps got me to the end goal of the plan. I progressively became a stronger person and can take on more complex and harder plans at different stages. The repetition of making plans and goals, breaking those down into smaller plans or steps, will give you that golden compass you need when life gives you that beat down and makes you question if you can stay on course. With repeating the cycle of evaluating your steps along your journey, you will be constantly pushing your comfort zones and be pushing those goal posts to higher and higher levels. The plans you made when you started out will seem like a cakewalk when you look back after all of these plans and repetition you've done. They will seem so easy and you will look and you'll be amazed on how much you've grown. The way to build natural confidence and seize your future and conquer your metaphorical mountains is through repetition and accepting there will be lots of failure along the way. And that's right, failure. It's a word that we're uncomfortable with, but it's an important one to acknowledge that the way you grow is by pushing your comfort zones. And with any pushing of the comfort zone, you can expect that failure is a part of the plan. And that's why the steps are constantly looking back and evaluating how you were doing towards a step and accepting that failure is a part of the game plan. And with the next step, you just try to improve and after evaluating what went wrong and course correcting with every misstep. Before you know it, you'll be confidently going on your next adventure. And with every adventure you embark on, you will crave more and more and get better and better with every goal met. And between work and travel, you will definitely have your energy pressed to its limits. And that's not a bad thing. But you may be wondering, how do I get more energy? I have a solution for you. Check out our next video that's gonna help you balance work and travel with that infinite energy you need.